We're going to get going in a minute. I just want you to look at this ingredient list, which I'm realizing is backwards. I hope it's not on yours. But anyway, we're going to get going in a few minutes here. Uh, I just want to go over what we're going to use today. First of all, I have my oven preset to 450 degrees. It's very hot. A very hot oven to make spigots, as I will call them. Um, you also don't need to have, but it's helpful if you have a cast iron skillet. This is a, what do you think this is, Matt? Nine inches? Eight inch skillet. This is an eight inch skillet. This only makes about five biscuits. Um, you need a bowl. I have a pastry cutter. Don't need it. You can either use your fingers to rub the butter in, or you can use two knives and cut them like this. You can also make these in the food processor and they come out awesome. Purists will tell you that that's just a big no-no, but I think it works great. Um, and it helps keep all your ingredients really cold. So I have most of my ingredients out, but my wet ingredients are still in the fridge because I want them really cold. You can put your butter in the freezer. Um, I didn't, I just cut it up and put it in the fridge. Mm -hmm. See what else? Oh, I almost forgot. This is a biscuit cutter. Uh, also, you don't need to have that. You can use a glass, a juice glass, a jam jar, whatever you have on hand. Um, and I'm going to get fancy a little bit later. So I have a little brush and a bowl with some buttermilk and honey for the top. Again, you don't need to do this. Biscuits are rustic and easy and quick, or at least they should be, so you shouldn't have to be fussy about it. Matt, how are we doing on Instagram over there? <laughs> Can everybody see me? What I'm doing? Is anybody on YouTube? Can you hear me? Hello. All right. So I'm gonna get going here. This actually goes very, very, very quickly. So to start, I'm gonna do my dry ingredients into the bowl. I need two cups of flour. Now, if you can get white lily flour, that is excellent. You can use cake flour if you really want to. Don't have to, just makes a nice light biscuit. Uh, you only need a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. I've never omitted it to see what would happen, and I don't intend to. A quarter teaspoon of soda. One teaspoon of baking powder. Oh, and my hands are clean. That's important because you're gonna get I'm gonna get in here and get dirty in a minute. Um, and my butter is lightly salted, so I'm only going to put a nice heavy pinch or so in. Maybe a little bit more. And I'm just going to mix the dry ingredients with my hands just to make sure that it's nice and incorporated. All right. Now, I am going to go get my wet ingredients out of the refrigerator because I want them super cold. All right, so I have six tablespoons of butter. This is local butter. Um, and I've already cut it up into little pieces. You don't have to do this, but as you're cutting the tablespoons in, you're gonna want this to incorporate into the flour mixture anyway. So it's helpful if you just cut it into little pieces. So I am just gonna put this all in here. And then again, you can use your fingers and rub it in. You can use a food processor and pulse it. it makes awesome biscuits in the food processor. I try not to tell people that too much because they're usually horrified, but you can also make biscuits in like five minutes. So I'm just going to cut this in until I have little tiny pea-sized pieces of butter coated in flour. 
So everywhere you have a piece of butter, it's going to create a little pocket of steam. And that steam is gonna lift the dough, giving it some nice rise. And it's also gonna create a, like a little ear pocket in there. And I do something that's a little, you know, unorthodox, but I actually, I'm gonna show you in a little bit. That's why I say six tablespoons of butter plus more, because we're gonna put a lot of butter in here. I really hope you're not offended by butter because this will be a very offensive thing you're making. Um, I add some more butter into here and I will show you how and I will tell you why in just a few minutes. All right, so this is what we're looking for. La, 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 la. Little tiny pieces of butter, like little pea-sized pieces. Basically, it should just look like, you know, little pieces of flour that's not broken up. Now, I put a little honey in here. Buttermilk is tart and tangy. You've got a little bit of salt in here. Just a little bit of butter, I mean, a little bit of honey. I love my spoon. Gives it this nice extra little flavor. Not so much that you go, oh, this is a sweet biscuit. Like I'm gonna make sausage biscuit gravy in a minute. Um, but it plays really, really well with it. It just kind of highlights the flavor of the biscuit and makes you go, ooh, this is, this is a well-balanced flavor. And you're right, it is. All right, this is really messy business. All right, so it says one, roughly one cup of buttermilk. The reason for this is you just want this to incorporate. This is, I'm not kidding when I say an incredibly messy business. Right. Ketchup. Get some coffee. My first cup of the day. All right. So we have our butter incorporated. We have our dry ingredients. Now for the buttermilk. This is some nice local buttermilk. I've been getting all my stuff from Maple Line recently. It's awesome. The abundance of amazing farm products in the valley is kind of embarrassing. So I'm gonna do, this is a two cup container. So I'm gonna use about half of it, but I'm gonna go a little shy of that because I don't want it to be too wet. It'll get gummy if you do that. So this is essentially, this gets very confusing for anybody watching in the UK because biscuits are cookies and what I'm making is a scone, but for, you know, lack of argument, we'll say, or for the sake of argument, we'll say we are in the United States, unfortunately, and so this is a biscuit. This is our version of a biscuit, but this is basically a scone. So if you've ever made scones, you know that this gets very messy. So probably actually used too much, but that's fine. This is what this should look like. I got two cameras going here. All right, now I'm going to just lightly flour a surface. And you wanna work as quickly as you can because you wanna keep everything cold. Probably should have taken my wedding ring off because it's gonna get messy. All right, I'm just gonna dump it out on a surface. I know you're looking at this going like, that's not really a dough. It is, I promise. Just gonna kind of work it. You want to work this as little as possible. I just want to get it to come together into a rough dough form. Probably should have floured my hands before I started, although I don't know if it really would have made that much of a difference. So I like to just kind of pick up any of the little pieces, put them in the middle. Now the dogs look at that. All right. Now I'm going to fold this into, this is when this gets interesting. I'm going to kind of press this out into a very rough rectangle. 
we are going to laminate these biscuits. So they are a buttermilk biscuit, but they're almost like a layered biscuit. They get nice rise out of them. They're so flaky and tender. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to wash my hands first. Any comments? Um, that's camera. We're making biscuits. Remember? What is You're going to take this over. Is that a fork? That's a bowl. The bowl that I use to mix the biscuits. All right. What is that for? Yes. So I have some more of my high lawn farm butter from the Berkshire. Or be so fancy. So Look at the color on that. All right. Now, to laminate your biscuits, yeah. you're basically going to take your rectangle and divide it into thirds. I'm just doing this for a visual marker for myself. I'm going to take thin slices of butter, break them up, and I'm only putting it in the middle. So this is why you want to break this visually into three parts. Hey, can we all get out from underneath my legs, please? You're gonna take one side, doesn't matter which one, and fold it over. I know this is messy, but it will be worth it, I promise you. So now we have another platform. Now you're gonna take another thin layer of butter. You kinda wanna just line it up along this whole thing here. My goal is going to be to fold this five times. So, to get five layers up. So, I already have one. I'm going to kind of press it down. Now, I'm going to fold the other side over it. I need a little more flour on this side. I'm going to sprinkle a tiny bit more flour on the top. All right, so now I have my three layers of butter. If you really want to, you could divide this in half, put some more butter on it, but you don't need to do that. So now I have my little book folded up and I'm gonna fold the back side over. So I've got this big giant stack of spigot here. Sorry, that's what my daughter called them. All right, now I'm working way slower than I usually do. I'm just gonna press it up. And I'm gonna fold it one more time. Okay. So I should have lots of nice, beautiful layers. So I'm gonna fold this out and you can, this is basically personal preference at this point. How tall you want your biscuits, how big you want them, you can make little biscuits. I'm gonna fold this out till, it, I'm gonna pat it out till it's about half an inch, we'll say. You're not rolling it, you're just patting it. Now, to prep my pan, you don't need a skillet, but I find that it works really great. Some people preheat their skillet. I, you don't need to do that. You're gonna put this in a really, really hot oven and they're gonna cook really quickly. I'm gonna take some bacon grease. Again, not something you need. You can just do butter, but have bacon grease. You're just gonna wipe down the bottom of your pan. And again, I use these biscuits for everything from sweet to savory. It doesn't matter. It just gives it a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of smokiness. And it works really, really well. You don't need to go crazy with it. It's just kind of an extra touch. All right. You can also do this on a sheet pan, like a quarter sheet pan works really, really well with the rimmed sides. There's going to be some butter seepage. So you want something that collects it. You don't want to put it on a cookie sheet. Um, you could do it with just parchment paper or you could butter your pan. Um, the next most important thing is if you want your edges to be crispy, you want to give them some space. You want to give them space to dry out around the edges. 
but if you want them soft, you can put them really close together. You can also take this rectangle and just roughly cut, you know, little squares out of it, stick it on a sheet pan like that, and then they'll be kind of pull apart biscuits. So again, personal preference, it's whatever, whatever you're happy with. So I'm gonna use my biscuit cutter, get a little flour on it. And you do wanna work this as little as possible. There is my spigot. So I like to have nice golden edges all the way around. So I'm gonna give them a little bit of space. There we go, it should be five biscuits. It always ends up five biscuits. And usually one is much smaller than the other. So you're gonna just reform your last two. And sometimes these are the best ones because they get these like nice little crags and nooks and crannies. You do want them, it doesn't matter how big they are necessarily, but you do want them all about roughly the same height so that they cook evenly. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with biscuits where some of them are done before the others. And so those are kind of overcooked and then you have other ones that are kind of raw. So it's the height more than the width. All right, here we go. Oh. Now, again, this is totally up to you. This is personal preference at this point, but I really like to brush the tops of them with buttermilk, honey, more butter, whatever you want to do. But I have a mixture in here of a little bit of honey and a little bit of buttermilk. It's going to help the top get a nice sheen to it, and it's gonna make them really nice. Now, if you are concerned at any point that your biscuits got too warm, you know, you did it with your hands and you're, you're afraid that your hands were too hot or whatever, you can take this and put this in the fridge or the freezer just for a little bit, just to kind of set it back up. It's like resting pastry dough. I'm not super worried about it. I know I'm gonna have some butter seepage. There's gonna be you know, a nice pool of butter on the bottom, but that just adds to the nice crust on the bottom. So, 450 degree oven. Which one did I turn on? Bottom. Right in. I don't know how long these take. About 10 minutes, we'll say. So, in the meantime, I am gonna make, I'm gonna clean up, because it's a mess, and I'm gonna make some sausage biscuit gravy, because it usually takes about the same amount of time the biscuits take so by the time the biscuits get out um, I have gravy to put on them this is going to be it's going to have to be a hard workout day after I eat this meal all right let me clean up a little bit I'm also going to show you guys, I've got my Instagram here, Matt's Awesome Home Fries. And I'm going to kind of, please ignore my dirty kitchen. I did clean it this morning. I did. All right, YouTubers. I've got my webcam on my laptop, so bear with me for a moment. I can hear the babies, my twins, in the mudroom playing with art supplies, which is kind of a terrifying noise. All right, you guys see, Ooh, baby. maybe someday we'll do a tutorial on these home fries. They are money. All right, so while my biscuits cook, I'm gonna put a timer on because otherwise I'll just forget and usually I just go by smell. So we'll say eight minutes. I do have them on convection so they'll probably cook a little bit quicker. All right, sausage.
Russian biscuit gravy. So easy. Milk, flour, sausage. I would love to tell you that I have some lovely local sausage for you, but unfortunately I ran out and had to reach deep into my freezer and pull out some Jones sausage, so forgive me. I can't, I can't be a local hero all day, every day. Hey babies, can we get out of there? Hold please. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see what you have. Keeping it real over here. Can we play in the playroom or our room? All right. Can everybody see? All right. So I have a 12 inch skillet. I think it's 12 inch. What else? Doesn't matter. I'm going to put it on like medium high heat. This is from Wisconsin. I didn't know that. All right. We are just going to brown this. I am not adding any extra fat to the pan. We're not going to need it. This will have plenty. Oh, you're bringing me a plate. Thank you. Yes, are you telling me you're hungry? You have porridge. Um, sometimes when we use local sausage, there's not a ton of fat in it. So we will add a little bit of butter or ghee to the pan just to give you the fat to make the gravy. You need some fat. <clears throat> it's just a reality. But I don't think this is going to be. I'm just going to crumble it up in the pan. Move it around until it browns up. It'll probably stick for a minute, but as soon as the fat comes out of it, it'll lift right up. Oh, those of you on YouTube can see the tops of the baby's heads as they dismantle the drawer with all their plastic holes and plates in it. Very excited to clean that up later. All right, I'm just going to get that in there and let it brown. Girl, for real. And then the other thing we put in here that we put in our home fries, we put in all kinds of stuff. Now, can you, uh, Cherries and it's a Cajun seasoning. It's awesome. Um, we use it on everything. It just makes everything taste better. Um, I'd like to tell you that we just kind of make our own. It's a little spicy. This this version in particular is spicier than usual. I couldn't find the other one at the grocery store. 
Uh, sometimes I have to order it online. Cajun Grocer has it. Um, I think you can actually get it on Amazon too. But it's just awesome to have around. Um, it does have salt in it though, so you know, tamper your salt use if you're gonna use it. Depends on how your sausage tastes too, and taste your food. Like once this is brown, taste it. See how it is. See how salty it is. You're gonna have to know what you're dealing with. Okay, I'm just gonna break this up a little bit. Two recipes for the price of one today. Come on. show you part that normally I would cut out if I were making a video, but it's live, so I only have a few minutes left of this torture. Break it up, break it up. I don't know why this is kind of always you have to have the home fries with sausage and biscuits and gravy because I what we do. It's just like a rule. It is a profound rule. Even though my children don't like white potatoes because they seem to be very confused about their heritage. Um they are Irish on the daddy side. I don't know why they don't like potatoes. Who doesn't love a potato? At least sweet potatoes, which I don't particularly care for, but you know, they're weird. Oh, there's our timer. I'm going to go check on the biscuit. No, not ready. I need like a few more minutes. <laughs> all right. You all need to see this. Ailsa put herself in her seat. She says, yeah, I'm ready to eat. That's can you please give me some spigots? Wow, our sausage is popping over here. All right, just getting nice and brown. That's exactly what we want. So some people do sausage biscuit gravy as, sausage gravy, I should say, as like a really runny gravy, not really anything. I know. They have honey on them, so they're gonna look a little brown. They're not quite ready yet. Fear not, Matt is worried about the biscuits. Matt, could you take over uh, sausage gravy land so I can readjust our camera for biscuits? All right, I'm just scraping up the brown bits. Matt's gonna take over for a minute. I'm gonna move you back over to biscuit land. No, he's not. He's not. He doesn't want to participate. having a bad hair day. 
I didn't agree to be filmed. <laughs> No, I haven't done anything. I've just browned the. Uh oh, somebody's crying. That's never a good sign. Everybody, everybody. I know, I'll get you some spigots in a minute. All right, I think these are Holy crap, it's so hot even with the like, double hand protection. So here we are. Look at these. See, these freeform ones are always a little funky, but sometimes they're the best ones. And you should be able to pull them apart. Matt is just adding flour to the biscuit gravy over there. He's cooking the flour up. So I'm gonna gingerly, I do not have chef hands, kind of pull this apart. So this is still a little gummy looking, but the other ones are good. So I'm actually gonna pull out the ones that are done, but that one's so big that it's not quite cooked. That's how I check them. Because we made a layered biscuit, you should be able to see. You should be able to just pull it apart. Oh, so beautiful. There's little pockets of butter. And it's going to continue to steam a little bit. Just a little bit. This one actually looks good to me. Yeah, that one's good. But just this one, I'm just going to. It's so hot. So hot. I'm just going to put this back in the oven. The oven's off, but whatever else it needs, it'll get in there. So, again, these are really, really hot, but I want you to see. So, this got nice and brown. It's not burned, but that's because we put honey on it, where this one obviously didn't get as much of the honey, so it's just a lighter golden color. These are so hot, but I want you to see what this looks like on the inside. It's light and flaky and steamy. You can actually see little bits of melted butter on there as well. So those are ready to go. Um, don't put your mouth on it. Burn your face off. <laughs> and these are great for everything from sausage biscuit gravy to butter and honey or jam, whatever you want to do with them. Just eat them whole, nothing on them. That's also fine. Um, strawberry shortcake, whatever kind of shortcake you want. I can't believe how um, patiently the babies are waiting for a biscuit. Um, a note on these, if you're going, if you're not going to eat them all at once, store them in an Eric tight container and put them in the toaster oven hole or the oven oven hole. Because if you break it up, that's fine. If that's what you wanna do, if you wanna make a breakfast sandwich, actually my favorite breakfast sandwich is um, ham, mustard, fig jam, and sharp cheddar cheese and a fried egg. So good on this. Um, but if you put them in the oven hole, the toaster oven hole, what it'll do is it'll recreate this texture. So it'll stay soft on the inside, it'll keep the moisture on the inside, and the outside will crisp back up. So if you split it open, obviously the inside's gonna dry out a little bit, which is fine if that's what you want. But I don't want that. So here is our beautiful sausage gravy that Matt just whipped up out of nowhere. All he did was sprinkle some flour in it to absorb the fat. Um, cook it down a little bit. You don't want to immediately add the flour, immediately add the milk because you need the flour to cook. You want it just like a golden color. And then he mixed the milk in there. 
and put some seasoning, some Cajun seasoning, and also some black pepper. It's kind of the traditional. So I'm gonna put this up for you so you can all see how we do this. Here's our beautiful biscuit. Here. Sausage. Again, we do our, our gravy a little bit thicker. Probably most people are used to. The babies are getting Don't restless. Drain the fat. Yeah, do not drain the fat. In fact, if you're using a local sausage and you find that there's not enough fat, you're going to have to add some butter to it. If there's too much fat, just take some out, but don't drain it off yeah, and try to separate the uh, sausage from the fat. The fat, don't do that. You have to leave it in there. If there's like a pool, if you're using like really inexpensive sausage and there's just a ton of fat in it, and there's a pool of fat, take it out. You want probably about like two tablespoons yeah. of fat, about. So um, leave it in there. Even if, if that, there's probably like yeah, one that. tablespoon of fat goes to that. All right. Hey. There we have it. So we have our beautiful biscuits. We have delicious breakfast that um, will keep us full probably all day. So thank you so much for coming to our first live stream uh, that I kind of sprung on everybody, including my husband. Um, it was fun. I had way more fun doing this than trying to record videos by myself and talking to a wall. So. Thank you for coming. Uh, if you have any requests, please let me know. I want some feedback. Um, something you're not really sure how to make, how to approach it, um, or you think I might know how to make and you don't. I'm happy to show you whatever I know how to do. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. We're gonna eat breakfast. Um, say bye, Claire. <laughs> yes! Good job of evening! <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Say bye bye from Oak and Ash Farm. <laughs> <laughs> bye, everyone. Ah. Kiss it. You can get this?